morning people Ryan here with love the work hope you guys are good welcome to the recording process going to uh, pick some songs talk about how we recorded them uh, recording process of now recording process of the future recording processes that are possible maybe some ones that are impossible despise so this is a song Brad wrote years ago haven't recorded it yet but in fact we I recorded a video of it um, this Sunday Christmas Sunday uh, Merry Christmas and it actually funny enough is not recording related but it got it was our most popular YouTube video in the last seven years um, and I think it was because a we had a little bit of momentum from a jazz jazz uh, video I put up the previous day so we had a little bit of mo momentum in the algorithm and also also um because I used a new hashtag uh indie music hashtag indie folk and I got that from another artist off of YouTube John Anglin and uh shout out to John let's see what else we got here I haven't recorded that one yet I don't know Brad I think Brad will probably record that at some point Check the hair. Blues. So this is another one Brad wrote, and I um, recorded a version of this. I'll show you right now while I go make my coffee. Excuse me. And then I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's the Schechter. That's singing. This in my uh, little practice space in North Hollywood a couple years ago, and uh, I'm sure I started with the Schecter Deluxe Reverb, probably SN57, like this, AB Sennheiser 609 on the cabinet, possibly. Um, a little bit of beef, a little bit of dirt on the guitar, you can hear that's the Ibanez Big Bottom Booster. Finger drums, which I think I can show you. Boom. If you don't know, now you know. Zoom RT223 rhythm track. These things are killer. I wonder, yeah, that must be what this is. Let's see the symbols. Yeah, that's a zoom. Super fun, easy way to get drums. Get that real feel um, that you can only get with with a person playing the drums as opposed to uh, something generating the rhythm, um, which for me is very important. That feel is very important. Which is why I'll even play drums, even if I'm not uh, greatest drummer out there I'll still prefer to play him because let's get that feel I want 
layer up some harmonies. Oh, there's a guitar solo coming. Play some of that. That's actually this harmony right here. Here comes the tone. Here it comes on the G string again, you'll hear all that tone juicing out of it like a ripe orange. After I stop messing around for a second. At least I thought so. So much more tone on that G string. to get the feel on the uh, finger drums. Based on suspicious facts, dude. This one we recorded in, uh, in like, you know, 99, 2000 in Matt's barn, recorded on the tape recorder. We had the task cam, I think we had an eight track at that time, 488 or something, and uh, recorded a handful of songs and this one, I can't find the recording. <laughs> I have a bunch of recordings that Tara sent me. She had the tape, she kept it, bless her. And it had a bunch of the songs, but it didn't have, I think the three that we actually wanted, which was Smile, Casey's song, based on Suspicious Facts, Matt and Casey wrote that. And uh, everyone's around. Oh no, did we have everyone's around? No, it wasn't that one, it was uh... God, maybe it was everyone's around. But this one, oh, it's making me sad to think about it. This one has us trying to be Steely Dan. So when I write in the bio, the guys were in the barn asking themselves what would Donald Fagan do? This is the song I'm thinking of because this is literally when Matt said to me, well, what would Donald Fagan do? And I said, famously, uh, he would draw on his uh, 40 plus years of jazz knowledge and theory and pull out just the right thing. And us being a couple of young musicians with uh, only a couple of years under our belt. So, okay, well, what else can we do? Um, this song, when we recorded it, we had these background vocals that Casey and I did. And it was such an exciting moment for us because when you're in the studio and you're making music, you're coming up with it. You're, you're making it up as you go along. So when you want to hear a sound and you don't know how to get it necessarily, well, you just try something. And so, Matt wrote this strong song, and Casey wrote the melody. Matt had the chords and the words, and Casey wrote the melody. And you put them together, it was a verse and a chorus, and it was so strong. And we wanted this little reactionary um, harmony vocal part. So the, 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 uh, the uh, chorus is like, I think my... Tune this is. I think my head is about to blow. A death round is moving too slow. So, as a reaction to each of those lines, got to go. We had these little background vocals. I hope that one day a tape resurfaces because. I mean, it's been like 20 years, and I want to hear it so bad. I want to hear young me and young Casey singing those parts and see how well we did, because I can remember it crystal clear as day, but it's not the same as actually hearing it on tape. So hopefully the tape surfaces. If you're watching this and you have the tape, please contact me.
Tuesday Electric. <coughs> I almost died. This is another one I recorded on this Pleasure Menu project. <coughs> Excuse me. 2015-2016 kind of was the rebirth of this group, Love the Work. We, we used to be called Willis. And um, <clears throat> I, I, I had all these songs from our past, and I wanted to record them. I mean, it had been 20 years. I'd learned so much in recording them. Like, it's time to, to bring these out to the people and, and record them again, you know, professionally, or at least as, as close as I could come. So took all these songs that we wrote, plus a handful of new ones, um, and one of them was Tuesday Electric, and, uh, excuse me, I'm going through hell right now. The drums. It's not way ahead of the beat, but it's this feel that, that, uh, is way ahead of the beat. Again, using the little drum machine, the little zoom. <laughs> Love this thing. Makes me want to use it more lately. And, uh... Guitar is probably this harmony. <laughs> I had a, uh... I had a Japan P bass at the time, which I uh, wish I had not sold, but you'll hear me say that a lot. But I love that drum feel. So I want to play this on real drums and nail this same feel. And what is that? Oh, the, the bass is playing the lead too. Foolishness. Hmm. And then it switches to a on I like what the bass is trying to do. Yeah, that's this harmony for sure. You can hear the tone is just has that open, clear, almost acoustic type sound. Not a lot of sustain. Boink, boink, boink. Each note just kind of jumps right out. But super fun. You can hear those symbols are definitely digital. Let's go to sleep. <clears throat> Love blind. Oh, over even under. Love blind over even under. Both those are off of uh, Rainbow Grass. I remember working uh, with Matt at his place in in Norway, and uh, over even under, we recorded some stuff at his house. So I started in my in my studio in North Hollywood um, with the guitar, and I think, yeah, I use this harmony again. This harmony is the star today. Just this great tone. Um, but it started with a riff. Do 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 do. Nice beefy riff. Doubled it with bass. Going for a John Bonham sound on the drums, just flat out, just going for a John Bonham sound on the drums. And uh, I only used two mics at, at that time. I only had a Tascam DP008, little digital recorder, eight tracks, about this size. Small little guy, but it only had two microphone inputs. So you can only do two channels at a time. So I had a drum kit, brand new, very excited. And I could only do two channels at a time, so I put a mic on the uh, kick drum, uh, Electrovoice RE20, and I put a, a mic uh, kind of above the snare, so if the snare's here and the hi-hats, the mic was just kind of here to try to catch the snare, the hi-hat, the toms, to kind of catch the whole kit. But it was a uh, dynamic microphone. It was a Sennheiser E609, the little flat silver one. and. Uh, I got some cool ass sounds with that mic 
setup. Now I use multiple mics, you know, seven, eight mics at a time, and, and I love it. I love the sound, but those first early days of recording drums with two mics, I just got some cool sounds, and, and I don't know... I don't know how I got them. I for sure need to go back and do that again. I I definitely was a I I was a lighter I was a lighter hitter at the time. I would hit the snare a lot lighter. Um, I'm not a real basher in the first place, but but um, but um, especially on Rainbow Grass, there's a lot of uh, a lot of drum sounds I got that I really liked that were very specific to that setup. Um, you hear the snare on abundance real quick. It's just, ah, ah, ah. But this is uh, over even under. You can hear the little organ in the right ear, that's Matt. It's all about that riff. All the little shaker comes in. Because it isn't very good. But uh, super fun. And uh, Matt was working at the hospital at the time and uh, had this paper towel dispenser that made this screeching sound when you. A little more Matt right there. Had this screeching sound when uh, you would pull each paper towel out. So he recorded it. He was on the night shift. He recorded it, and uh, we used it on the song. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, watch this. <laughs> oh, so good, so good. So the keyboard comes in with this screeching sound as you hear the rat distortion pedal. And, uh, but man, that paper towel scream just freaking puts it over the top. Oh, good times, good times. Love Blind, oh, it's funny, that's the one that I just almost picked. Love Blind is one I did I wonder if I used the harmony again, but it's this doo-wop song, two chords, you know, the one to the six, to the one to the six, that's standard doo-wop progression. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, let me listen because I don't remember. I know I did um, drums. Easy now. Call your harmony. Oh, that snare. God. Why is it so big? I'm tripping out right now. Now, love is a disease. I'd outlaw it if I could. It twists the object I wonder what of the base is. desire beyond recognition and renders I just want that impossible. Appreciation. Love God, that's not on the bass. Oh. Ooh, love and the organ.
You know, I think a lot of where that drum sound was was the cymbals too, because the snare sounds so big because there's so much rum. They're the um, Sabian quiet tones. You've probably seen those cymbals they make for drums that have all the holes in them, and they're for low volume. They're for practice. And uh, God, I love that so much. And I bought a set of them to record with because uh, for me the problem was always it was too much hi hat. And it was the fact that I'm not a good drummer, so I couldn't hit the kick drum hard enough. I couldn't hit the snare drum hard enough. So the cymbals are just overpowering everything when it hits something, too much cymbals. So I said, well, I'll fix that. I'll buy some practice cymbals. I'll record those. So it worked in a sense that um, there just is a little dinky sound. Dink, 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 dink. It's just attack. There's no body. There's no decay to the sound. So everything else can expand and have a big sound. The kick drum can sound big, the snare can sound big, even though I'm not hitting it hard, you know, and it just has this black big sound, which, God, that's so lovely. Love, love. Let me hear that one more time. Holy man. Wow, what a sound. So fun. I think I like talking about music as much as I like playing music. No reason. Man, we're on a rainbow grass kick right now. This one was this one was one of my favorites because we all played on it. Matt, Brad and I all played on it. Uh, so I started it with the guitar. Two tracks of guitar. This one's fun because the guitar part is like this. So I separated that into two guitar parts. So one part is just the bass. And the other part's like. the high part right so I, I don't know if I use the same guitar on both sides but I know for the bass I use the uh, ES-175 and there's this one part in the song I mean I'm just playing bass boom 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 literally um, quarter notes simple as can be excuse me and there's this part where this little harmonic cluster just blooms out somehow and I I don't know how, I mean, I must have palm muted and touched a, 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 a harmonic or something, and it just blooms out in this thing. I'll have to listen to it, I don't know. But then, you know, I just doubled the bass line with my keyboard. I had one of those big Yamaha uh, 88 keyboards, P115. Boom, boom, use the bass sound, electric bass sound. Big, fat, beautiful sound. When the bass line is that simple, it's so easy to get something that sounds so great. But, um, and then the drums was that little Ludwig Breakbeats kit. Thankfully, I still have it um, with that same miking technique, two mics. But, uh, but the real cool thing, last thing I'll tell you is I saved room for three solos. I love guitar solos. Matt plays solos, Brad plays solos, I play solos, Casey plays solos. But I love guitar solos, so I wanted to write this section where we each take one. So measured it out, so, you know, eight measures for him, eight measures for him, eight measures for him. Went to Maine for my yearly visit. I visit every summer and um, and we all got together at Matt's house and uh, and we each recorded our, our guitar solo. This is the first time I had recorded with Brad in, in a long time, so it meant a lot. It was, it was a lot of fun to, uh, to do that, but um, let me show you what that, what that turned into. That might be the same guitar both sides. 
You hear that little ding dong? No reason. Watch this. It's in the right ear. You hear that ding dong? What no is reason that? to be. One more time. Literally, that's what I'm playing. Bong, bong, bong. Watch. Wow. No reason the magic to of the be studio. Sorry. Bass and drums come in. Your worry only serves the enemy. A little harmony. Better to fix your heart on something real. You almost hear that harmonic again. As they say, the truth will set you free. Here comes Brad. Shake it. Matthew. He had a part written for this, and when I was surprised, he had, he was surprised that I was surprised because he goes, "Well, I'm gonna do my homework." Bradford on the lead there. Again, what would uh, what would Donald Fagan do? And Matt does a little outro, but you can hear the drum so clearly. You can hear the the kick and the snare so clearly. And that's no, that's not any studio techniques, that's not any mixing techniques, because when I mixed this album, I didn't know any mixing techniques. I didn't have any, you know, any, any uh, knowledge. So you're just hearing what the mics are hearing. And uh, the more I talk about it, the more I want to do it again. I could go back to it again. Matt does a little outro guitar. Oh, I heard it already. But, uh, man, so fun. Crown, yes. This is cool because the same record I did, I played you a couple songs, um, Tuesday Electro, we had the finger drums and everything. I also recorded a bunch of stuff at that time on my tape recorder. It was kind of a throwback feeling to go back to the early days in the barn recording on tape instead of digital. And uh, three of those songs, I was almost going to say it was all the tape songs on that on that record, but three of those songs I think came out really good but I never put them out. I never put out that record pleasure menu. So I was listening to them weeks ago and I decided I'm going to put them out. But that was before I had drums. So what I'm gonna do is add bass and drums. Ideally, I would love to have Matt play bass and drums on that, or even Brad possibly. If we can, he doesn't have drums, maybe we can put him in the studio and record that, but um, there was a lot of uh, a lot of vibe on this that would be very hard to recapture. So I'm just going to put it out as it is because I love the way that it came out. So much like anger. I am low, bitter trash. I am the, the lowest right here, the scum, giving only poor returns of black hole of deception. Waste everything is mine. The world belongs to me. A shallow echo of my stupidity. Now, what the bass drums to come in? Live. I like the taste, I like the feel, I like the look. Just basic rocking. I like the That's gonna be fun because this this little EP is gonna have three songs, and they have that tape tape sound real warm. Um, that's gonna be a lot of fun.
uh, probably come out in March. I know the date, I just don't have it off the top of my head. Mmm. Code, yes. So Matt mixed this record, it's the self-titled record. Um, called Love the Work, of course. And, uh, looks like this. And uh, on side B is Code. Let me just play it a little bit. You can say the words, but you might as well be Sounds okay. speaking in code. There's a big difference between this and the, and the song I just played you on tape. If you know your heart, a lot more cymbals, though. You don't hear the drums as much. To be one with the truth. Cause what's meant's not what's heard. It's a lot more of a hi fi sound, though. And, uh, but during the pandemic, we all got that money. So I bought some real symbols. You know, I. It's funny how right now I'm talking about how wonderful the uh, practice symbols are, but then I was like, oh, I need some real symbols. These practice symbols are for the birds. So I bought some real symbols from Zildjian. And, uh, and uh, started to record with those. Um, Recorded the drums in the garage out there. Recorded most everything here in my bedroom. And um, I'm kind of listening to my friend AJ sings right there. And a vocal. And Matt mixed it like a master. The song was different too because I played it on organ instead of guitar. I'm a guitar player, you know. But. Um, Excuse me, this one was fun because I recorded on organ sound that I typically like to avoid, I guess. So, but it turned out to be one of the coolest, coolest songs. Kind of that whole shadow thing where all, all that, so, so much energy in the shadow. But, um, I gotta show you the guitar solo too. Watch this. My, this is my favorite guitar solo that I've ever done. Yeah, man, I would uh, record tracks, send them back, you know, put them in Dropbox, and thankfully he mixed this whole record. The whole Love the Work record is all mixed by Matt. And um, and we just keep layering tracks. We, we talk every Sunday, we talk about the songs and, and, and what we could possibly do. And over the course of, I don't know, four, five, six months, put the whole record together. The last couple of months, we really started to snowball and, and, and get a lot done. And uh, had it mastered, Adam A. in over at um, Gateway Gateway Studios mastered it. Amazing, amazing. So much fun. Let's see what else we got here. Clean Escape. Same record. This was like what we would call the hit off the record. It was like. The lead single. We didn't have a lead single, but this is one Matt played bass. She likes a clean escape. Won't even park. You stay stay inside so well. of the road. Afraid of what we all would think. Maybe that's not it at all. We all live in a fantasy world. May as well make it a bright one Halloween has 
it's come again And now I'm the one who's frightened Oh, your weakness is so precious But what now of your strength? Haven't we plumbed the depths of indecision? And I recorded the bass, I doubled the bass with uh, Yamaha DX7 synthesizer <clears throat> to fatten it up on the second half. You know, played my drums. That's one where I have the little Ludwig Breakbeats kit, and if you're familiar with it, the bass drum is very small, 16 inch bass drum. Almost unheard of, I think it's about the smallest one you can get your hands on. And it uh, has a little boom, little beep, 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 small sound. And you know, Matt, one time on one of our calls, he's like, uh, God, I wish the bass drum had a little more boom. And I had all that pandemic money at the time, and I was like, no problem. Went on my phone, found a Yamaha recording custom bass drum, 22 inches. Let's go. Boarded it up, shipped in from California, came in locally. Black, beautiful. Boom. So that's what you hear on this one. And he uh, he used the compression, made made it really audible, so you can hear hear it on here. I remember listening to it on uh, my friend Wynn's big speakers and it just it was like boof there was like two parts to the kick drum there was the boof and then there was the oof, the body of it that like came along behind the attack and uh such a good sound but um yeah um totally lost my train of thought but nice active bass line um, whistle solo, um, Clean Escape, Baduda. Oh, Kate sang on that one too, on the outro, on the last chorus. Boom, 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 boom. Speaking of singing, what do I know? So, um, in, uh, 2015, 2013, 2014, we went to, um, Baked Bean Studios in Maine, our friend Alan. And God, I think it was our first time in the studio, in a real studio, first and last time at, at this point. But um, there's Matt, Brad, and Alan in the studio. And uh, we each went in with a, with a number of songs and uh, and recorded them up. So one of the ones we did was uh, What Do I Know? And this was kind of a collab because Brad wrote the guitar and I wrote the uh, the words, the melody. And <clears throat> when I wrote it, they just went together so well. It was like they had been, you know, written for each other. They just went right together. And so Matt recorded, excuse me, Brad recorded the guitar. Uh, I started recording the vocals and we rehearsed this over at Brad's place. Um, and when we we I knew we wanted these harmonies. There's a, there's a version I recorded that had synthesizers that come in on a certain section, the B section or C section, and this big buzzy synthesizer. But I wanted to do that same thing, but with vocals. And so the complexity of our voices layering together would create that effect. So we rehearsed it at Brad's. I have I have uh, recordings on my phone of us just sitting there rehearsing the, the harmonies and what we came up with. It's just so wonderful. Each guy's just singing his own thing and but the chords are open enough that that uh, it just works. <clears throat> but let me let me show you actually. Where do I have this? Dropbox. Boom, 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 And when when we were, when we harmonized in the studio, 
it just had this angelic sound. And I say it's, I say it's the angels singing. So glad that we're together making music together. What do I know? But, um, you know, there's only three notes, me, Matt, and Brad. But there's this extra harmonic that's there, and it's audible. Here, watch this. extra harmonic that's created by our three voices that uh, I don't know what it is but it's magic but um, Brad recorded drums on the uh, Roland V drum kit digital drum kit they had that's what Alan had at the studio but I wanted to do real drums so I think this is real drums pretty much just took what Brad played on drums and, and just tried to play that as best I could, but on a real drum set. One of the mics a little far away so you could hear the, the bigness of the room and everything. Brad, Brad on lead. a British drum company, a drum kit from British drum company, and some big minor cymbals. I picked out like 20 inch crash, 22 inch crash, big 20 inch ride, sort of just big huge cymbals. Um, I might fix the timing on that a little bit just to get the feel a little better, but I feel like the takes are good enough that, that, that I don't really need to do new takes, but uh, I might fix the timing a little, slide them around in the in the DAW walking on air this is one oh god we've never recorded it this is funny because excuse me Casey wrote this song it's my favorite song of all time like when I think of Casey writing music this is what I think of and uh better way better way to lift me up Uh 
Apocalyptic glowing eyes Burn me down, show my other side You said you looked like back Now I'm here, where are you? I'll take my place back on the street Lay beneath the setting Something stops for those who want me there They say it's like walking on air So do I So do I So do I So it's like all major chords Except for one chord And the melody is just so strong my favorite song of all time. I still can't sing it. It's it's a little out of my range, but but um, I must have recorded it a million times. But I don't have any like uh, since I could never sing it well. I don't have any like what I would call a definitive recording of it. I think what I should do, what I should do is just move it down into my vocal register. But also at the same time, because it's Casey's song. I don't feel t totally comfortable putting it out. I, I would want him to sing it. You know, it's not a collab. It's just he just wrote that song. But um, the, 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 the early sessions I first spoke about on this show, we recorded in the barn. That song, we <clears throat> it's one of the last ones we, we were working on when we all stopped working together. And somewhere on a tape, that lies unfinished. And I don't think we had anything but maybe a acoustic track and a, and a vocal scratch track. Um, you know what? Brad sang. You know, we did have a scratch track and Brad sang on it. Let me show you that, actually. It's not the same, but it's definitely something. Yeah, this is the this is the acoustic track we had. No way to lift me I think. Up. The usual's been shot to fuck. Just wait a while. And here it's he's around. straining to sing it. And so you find that so do I. The ground's the funnest place to be. Believe That's even be, down a whole step. Believe me be. A bloody smile and tattered knees Been kicked down once or twice before I'm at your door Awaiting company per se To come with me for every day Just go away, you always say I'd be a mess if I had the time to run away, to run away, to run away. Apocalyptic glowing eyes burn me down and show my eyes. Such a good tune. <clears throat> so I don't have any plans to record that in the near future, but if Casey starts working with us uh, again, definitely have to bust that out and I wonder if I've done that one on my Monday covers I feel like I have definitely not Monday covers it's not on the list have I done it already I did do that one I don't remember it but I did I guess I did it so sad Actually, I did write a, a section at the end of it, but I don't consider it as official. I don't consider it as canon. So, what has? So, this is another Brad song. Uh, it's the last song on his record, Bikini and Cowboy. Um, I'm just going to play it because it's so good. Oh, all I need. What has come over me and why do I feel this way? I'm 
delay on the vocal. And while you said that, could you please try and explain? Cause I've tried so many times to try and say what I'm trying to say. So while you're just sitting there, could you please try and recorded a version of this I'll show you actually what the heck was it called in the kitchen do I have that um, I made a little EP in 2015 2016 and uh, it was just it was like a thank you to each guy Matt Brad and Casey so I did one each of their songs and one of mine so four songs total and uh, the Brad, that's the one I picked for Brad, so what has, let me see, past, what the heck was it called? In the kitchen. Jeez, I'm thinking right now, like, what, where the hell is it? Dude, that's crazy. Where the hell is it? If I needed a hand Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, I don't even know if I have it on my Dropbox, actually. Trippy. Well, I'll have to show you another time. If I needed a hand. Bleed out, sick. It's a song I wrote kind of about Brad. And it's going to be on the record Never Enough. I'll show you where I'm at right now. I work on each song a little bit, not a little bit each day, but every day I, I might work on one song. Um, but let me see where this one is at right now. Excuse me. I like how it's coming along though. I need bass guitar. Billy, if you're listening. Drugs and cowardice At least I'll have your music I know you'll have 
a super dark record. It's gonna be. so excited for this record never enough <sighs> so excited for this record coming up all right get time for one more oh too long too long i wonder if i have a, i think i have a recording of this i think it's just the one that brad recorded on his phone let me look I feel like my search on uh, on uh, my Dropbox is not working right today, or I'm using it wrong. But let's see. Dude, where the bug is it? Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I don't have it. Let's do a different one. Making good time, yes. So uh, the picture showed up. Making good time. So this is the third single off of um, Jazz Odyssey. We'll play this out. Synthesizers, acoustic guitars, um, vocals. Craig mastered it. God, it sounds so good. Making good time off of Jazz Odyssey.
Thank you guys for hanging. I'm Ryan with Love the Work. Check us out on Spotify and uh, check us out on Twitch, which is where I'm streaming this now. And thank you guys so much. See you soon. Bye.